<laughs> Hello also, I'm finally making my build guide for you guys. So first off, it's going to be a little bit of a longer video. I'm breaking it up into two sections. Today is going to be my DPS section, which is what I normally show you guys. Um, however, uh, next week I'll be releasing my healing section. So this is part one of two. Alrighty. Now, um... I'm going to try to answer as many questions about this build as I can think of that comes to my head. If you have any more, feel free to ask. I'll try to get back with you right away. Um, so the first thing I'm going to note for you guys is this is my build. I made it for me. It's not something I planned on releasing. It's kind of janky in my opinion. It suits my playstyle 100%. It's not going to suit everybody's playstyle. It may not suit yours, but it'll be a good template for anybody. Um, I urge you to make changes to it and, um, you know, make it yours. Of course, uh, the we have update 51 coming out soon, so I am going to try to explain through a few changes that I'm making to this build. So this video is not going to stay relevant for very long. However, I'll try to give you guys the tools needed to what I think will uh, that I will be doing with this build once update 51 comes out already um, now of course this build works best if you have your past lives done um, you're trying to get every ounce out of this build to keep up with you know some of the meta builds out there and some of the end game players um, you need to have your racial enhancements done you need to have your racial lives done you need to have your epic lives done you need completionists um, get your melee iconics all that kind of stuff done um, for it to really play at its top level. And that's just like every other build, but this one, especially the, the cap, the ceiling on it, I think is a little bit higher than most builds. I think a lot of the other builds out there, you can get away with not having everything on it. Alrighty, um, so one of the qu uh, common questions I get is, why do you play Pure Druid and not a split build? Do split builds do more damage? Or do pure druids do more damage? What's going on? Um, and the simple answer to that is uh, I think these split builds do more damage. The reason I play pure is for versatility. Um, if you notice to my left of the screen right here where I'm popping up the stuff for you there's two different gear sets. One is for DPS and the other is for healing. Um, the one I'm showing you guys today is just going to be my DPS gear set, but the other side of this build, it's a very versatile build, is I could full out raid heal, I can raid push heal, um, I can even tank if I have to with my healing spec side. Um, I'm one of the main healers of my guild and I have to be able to be ready for heals at any time. And I, I'm actually about halfway through. Um, switching over to DPS, that's something I gotta do right now on this thing. So, I'll go over the enhancements. And this is why I say it's gonna look a little bit weird, okay? Um, I put 20 into Half Orc Racial, 41 into Nature's Warrior. I like to get this Great White Wolf. The capstone for Nature's Warrior is actually pretty awesome. Two Strength, two Wisdom, and ten Double Strike and Physical Resistance. The Double Strike there is freaking awesome. It's one of only, I think, three, maybe four classes in the game that actually get Double Strike. I mean, I think Fighter gets Double Strike, and I think our Pally gets Double Strike from Zeal. Um, so it's either three or four classes that actually get Double Strike. So it has some of the highest... Uh, double strike in the game um, and you can actually get the double strike on this build to 100% and pretty much maintain it or maintain it um, in end game content which is extremely good um, and with the new Epic Destinies coming out um, it's looking like you're going to be able to maintain 100% pretty much no matter what or near it at all times um, so are split builds better? Um, I don't really know a whole lot about split builds. Um, I know the 1181 splits get a times two crit multiplier, and this has a t uh, times one crit multiplier bonus. So 
I would assume with the correct gear, a 1181 split would out DPS me. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm not a DPS main. I'm a healer main. Um, that's a, a, something important to know. I heal. Um, DPS is just something that uh, I do because I can on this build. You know? Um, so, on my enhancements, I train... I make sure I pick up this Great White Wolf. Gives you 30% cold absorption, which is very handy. Um, I get go for the kill here as my tier 5. It gives me, it's a pretty nice attack, but the nice thing about it is it gives you a melee power bonus. Um, 15, I think it's 30 over 10 meters away, which, uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it's like an action boost, triggering an action boost, but you could keep it up pretty much 100%. Um, the other tier 5 I get is Jaws of Ice. Um, gets you a little bit of temporary hit points. Um, you might as well. And Swift Hunter, of course, for the attack speed. Already. And this is a must. Fatal Harrier. Um, all the DPS bonuses from Nature's Warrior. Now, for right now, I'm training in Nature's Protector. I get Rages. Yeah, I'm not trading up here, so I can't cast heals when I am raged. Um, but this does give me 10 melee power, some strength, that kind of stuff. I get the stance, I get some extra defenses, that kind of thing. And then I train falconry. Um, and falconry is nice because I get to train wisdom as a secondary. That helps me spell point wise. And that gives me deadly instinct already. Also, I take the helpless damage for additional helpless damage. Um, some nice bonuses from falconry. Great to incorporate in this build. Alrighty. Now the changes I'm going to make to this after update 51. So I'm probably going to train out of Nature's Protector. And train into Vistani Knife Fighter. Because I will be most likely using Legendary Dreadnought. And they got rid of my haste boost in Legendary Dreadnought. So going to have to pick it up from Vistani Knife Fighter. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you're going to lose your... Defense, a little bit of hit points. It's looking like I'll be able to gain that back from the legendary Dreadnought tree. So I find that kind of interesting. It should be a crapshoot. I should stay about the same. Um, when update 51 comes out, I still plan on using legendary Dreadnought. I like the way the tree looks, and I'll probably mix a little Fury, and then I'll have to check out the other trees and see what else I'm going to mix in. But that's the plan right now. I'm super excited about update 51 for this build. And that's about the only changes. The other change I might make is with me training Vistani Knife Fighter. Um, I might be able to put a few extra points or an extra point into Falconry. And picking up the bird and that will allow me to recharge Deadly Instinct. Now, something I know what you're thinking. Well, you only have three rages and five Deadly Instincts and they don't recharge. And yeah, that's right, they don't recharge. Um, so I, th I think my build's a little janky. Um, because most people are able to recharge theirs or don't have a limit or have a lot more rages. Um, where I have to kind of be careful and be picky and choosing at when I use my stuff. However, I personally don't have an issue. Um, I never run out of them. Unless it's like a long, ra long raid and I'm just burning through everything. Um, I never have an issue with them personally. I've just gotten really good at just being conscious of, you know, when to ha when to rage and, you know, when to use deadly instinct, you know. Um, and I think if you learn to do that, you'll find, oh, 10 minutes of deadly instinct is plenty, and I think I have like 10 to 12 minutes of rage is plenty, you know. Um, my gear... I use the winner set on this character, and it's not hard to gear the DPS side of this character. Uh, the DPS side, I think, is pretty easy to gear. If you have your past lives done, your racials and that kind of stuff, you honestly should have no issues making the stuff needed for this build. So, first things first, um, I wear light armor, okay? Legendary wildcard. Um, Wolf has evasion. I use that to take advantage. I know what you're thinking. Oh, what about your MRR? Um, I play Monk. I don't have a problem with lower MRR. If I need higher MRR, 
I do carry the um, medium armor somewhere in my inventory, I can't remember where, I can always switch to. Um, so that's something to know. If I need higher, um, I'll just switch to medium armor. But right now, I think with the medium armor, I'm at 81. Which isn't horrible, it isn't great, it's, it's enough for me. I don't have an issue with spells. I usually don't die from spells, let's put it to you that way. Um, I use the winter set. I like having the extra hit points and stuff on this thing. And I like using the part of the family shard set. Okay, so I have the raid necklace. Got the insightful armor piercing. I have the legendary hammer fist. And I have the armor here. Um, I'm also using legendary collective sight for my strengths. Um, I use Legendary Crown of Butterflies for the magical sheltering. Also, it just happened to be the one that I get Reaper boosted. So I'm like, heck yeah, I'm a butterfly fan. That sounded wrong. But anyway, um, I'm using the Winter Set. I have um, the cloak here. Uh, I love cold absorption. Uh, without it, you can easily get one shot by a Polar Ray endgame. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that you need cold absorption for it, so I really like this cloak. Um, I use the Dire Wolf Belt. I use the Deep Snow Boots for Khan. That kind of stuff, you get freedom of movement. And I use the Cold Iron Bracers. Um, and my Artifact Ring is for Wisdom, so it gives me bonuses to my DCs and that kind of stuff. Um, also, it happens to have Quality Axe, Quality Deadly. Um, and that kind of stuff. I use the Wild Augment Fortitude, or Wild Fortitude Augment set on this thing. Um, and I just try to fill out what I think the build's lacking from there. Uh, I got Dodge. Dodge is important. With um, Light Armor, I can hit up to 40 Dodge with my 40-something 40, 40 Dodge with my Flight. It's a pretty nice bonus. You know, if you run into Dooms and stuff, or Plagues, you want to have something to block damage. You know, um, a Globe of Blood, of course. I have the Draconic Soul Gem. Um, I, I have to work on saves and stuff on this thing, so I do twist in um, Dexterity. I twist in Insightful Wisdom. Um, and I, uh, I like Feather Falling. You don't have to have Feather Falling on your gear. Um, you can have a switching item, but I'm like, ah, I have nothing better to put for right now. Um, so I gotta work on this build is I gotta f I gotta get another one of those greater heroism augments that'll help with my saves too, and I put sapphire resistance somewhere on this build. Alrighty, now the weapon I use is the tail of Sulamadis. I think for this build there's nothing better out there. Um, there it is. It has a 30% crit chance. I mean, you just can't beat that. Um, that crit threat range is awesome, and it has a times three crit multiplier, so it just works out great. I use Sucker Punch, Prowess, Filigrees, and I use a um, I use four piece Shattered Device for a little bit of debuffs. Um, I do have a few other weapons here. I do switch to, and I'll explain some of my switch gear. Um, I think they're nerfing this soon, if I'm not mistaken. But the Blood Feast you get from Raging. Extra thousand hit points helps with survivability. Look at that, easy, easy. Um, I try to do that every time I hit rages. Um, also, some simple switch gear I use is the Epic Height of Fallen, just basically for the top part there. Druid, dru, druidic survival mastery. While in wild shape, you receive primal bonus to damage equal half to number of wielder slur feet. It's actually a really big DPS boost. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more. I actually switch over to that in raids or if I need a DPS boost. Um, now this gear set I just told you about is what I use primarily now. And I'll explain my five rings there in just a moment too. I haven't forgotten about them. Now I do have other gear sets I use like seven piece summer um, to switch to with the uh, new content. Or with update 51 coming out 
and this is still a work in progress. I'll have to make update videos on my gear layouts in the future, but I am working on a glass cannon gear setup, um, kind of working with others that also play uh, druid builds, and I'm kind of still working. It's a work in progress, but right now, um, seven piece summer a set and that kind of thing would work nicely. You'd lose some hit points and survivability, but the DPS would be slightly higher. Um, also, I would incorporate that cloak somewhere in the mix. Um, that would give you 5% uh, more quality double strike, um, that kind of stuff. Now, my five rings, um, there's two things you need on the five rings. You need constitution, armor piercing, regular armor piercing. You need um, stunning, of course, and vertigo. You want to utilize your character's tripping ability. Okay, So on this one, I have quality strength, stunning, accuracy, constitution. And on this one, I have armor piercing, quality wisdom, vertigo, and sheltering. Alrighty. Um, and that's what I use for that. I have the, of course, epic quiver of lacquer, alacrity, and, and that's all besides that there. Now, my feats, I'll leave in the description below. Um, at level 1, you have to take Falchion Mastery, because it's a pure build. You don't get it. So you have to take a Falchion Mastery. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's what I call it, Falchion. Um, level 3, 6, and 9, you take the Druid Melee Feats. 12, I take Improved Critical Slashing. 15, Power Attack. 18, Completionist. 21, um, the Improved quit, Crit that gives plus 1 Crit Multiplier on 19 to 20. Um, 24, I take Quicken. 27, I take Power Healing. And... 30, I take Intensify. You do not have to take those three if you're just going DPS. But, like I said, I am a split healer, so I also heal, and I have to take those meta magics to heal properly. Alrighty. Now, of course, uh, on the in-between levels, um, the minor stuff, Dire Charge at level 29. Um, 26, you take the two-weapon fighting for double strike. So you get the, as much double strike as possible. And um, there you go. That's pretty much it on feats. And I'll write that down below for you. Now my stats here, I'm just going to show you a few things. Saves aren't horrible. They're not great. In Reaper, they go up quite a bit. Um, my PRR is decent. It's about 250-ish in Reaper with um, Blitz going. So it's not too bad. Um, decent amount of saves. My dodge. Um, heal lamp's not horrible. Uh, double strike. It sits at 83%, but between my gloves and... Ooh, I forgot to slot that. Howl. Um, so ability adds 10% to your double strike. See, I have it. Oh, I gotta actually get the spell. I just capped, so I'm still, still a little bit of a work in progress here. Um, I'll figure that out in just a few. Howl gives 10% double strike every 30 seconds. Um, so between Howl and your gloves, you're maintaining anywhere from 83 to 98% um, double strike at all times. And um, I usually use the boost double strike, but with the epic destiny changes it's looking like I'm gonna be able to maintain higher and I won't need this boost we'll have to see I'm gonna create like a update video down the road at some time to kinda of clue you guys in already um, as for epic destinies it's real simple I go into um, dreadnought and let me set this up for you I like taking sense weakness from fury um, Primal Avatar, I take Symmetric Strikes. It gives 5% to damage, so that's a no-brainer. Um, I take Meld, besides that. 
and I usually pick up the plus one damage from Grandmaster Flowers. And I'm going to do something similar with the new stuff. I haven't looked at all the trees and stuff, but I'm going to figure out... Of course, Meld's going to go bye-bye, so you have to play a little bit more conscientiously. Um, you don't have an oh crap button anymore as much. I mean, you still will have your cloak. You still will have your uh, flight. So I'm not too worried about losing Meld. But um, this is my setup in Dreadnought. I get my crit, a little bit of strength, my action boost bonus, DC feat bonus, um, weapon damage, um, and of course haste boost which is going away, which I'm sad about. So basically what I'm finding is once update 51 comes out, even though I'm trading at a bear tree, you'll gain back that stuff from the dreadnought tree because you can get um, PRR and stuff from the Dreadnought tree now. So I think it's going to be pretty much a crapshoot. It's going to come out about the same all said and done. Um, when update 51 comes out, it should have a little bit more melee power. Um, and you also have adrenaline along with your Dreadnought tree. And you also will be able to recharge, um, you know, your boosts, which is something I'm looking forward to. So Depending on that, I might drop Action Boost Orcish Rage and just get more, get something else besides that. But besides that, that's what I'm looking for. Um, that's what I'm looking to do at Update 51. I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be really, I think the DPS right now is going to be a lot higher once the Update 51 comes out. Like a lot higher. So, all right, now the last thing I'm gonna go out on, on this video is how I play this. Now, this build is extremely hard to play. Um, just give you all a fair heads up. It's a learning curve. Um, and if you want to play it at its highest possible extent, you gotta get used to switching between bear and wolf form. And if you notice in all my videos, I'm always switching. Um, the bear form gives awesome AOE DPS. Um, mass trips, you get Relentless Onslaught um, and Tremor. It trips everything in sight. Uh, that's why I say train Vertigo or have Vertigo on your gear somewhere because you want to be able to trip stuff. Um, and I think with Update 51, anything tripped is going to have Helpless. So your Helpless damage is going to be like crazy good. You're going to have Helpless damage on pretty much all mobs once update 51 comes out um, and these aren't like a regular trip that a barbarian or fighter has these trips trip almost everything um, I, I still can't believe the stuff I actually tripped with bear and wolf is even more crazy but you want to have some of these spells like shred um, plus one critical multiplier uh, rising fury uh, if you get attacked, which you will take damage as a frontline melee, um, you'll get a bonus to your hit points and that kind of stuff. Um, and then animal growth is a much, must, of course. Plus four size, known as the strength of constitution. It lasts three minutes. You have got to take that. All right. Magic Fang is one of my spells. Super important, guys. Um, this is almost as good as deadly. When you have a pure druid... Um, it's it scales with your level so um it's almost as good as deadly okay watch this 136 base damage on that weapon 144 now so it is a must have um ram's might the size bonus it lasts a lot longer than animal growth uh, it gives plus two uh, bonus to strength from your size bonus it's the same as animal growth however it gives you plus two to damage also so something you want to take of course if you have access to death ward take it guys you need death ward um besides that i take a harrowing pack for your wolf form i think it's a 20 on 20 it gives you a trip um very nice thing to have um and as for a lot of the pots and stuff i have here um i have my casting stuff 
Um, and then I have my melee stuff here. Plus two alchemical bonus to attack and damage. It's a must. And your Yugo pots for strength. Um, you'll want those too. Now how I play this. I play when I'm doing R10 quests. I'd say 80 to 90% of the time. I'm in bear. And if I run into a boss or something. Where there's not a lot of enemies in here. I'll switch over to wolf. Um, because wolf has a lot greater attack speed. Um, wolf has a lot of other bonuses. Um, freezing. This little snow slide thing. Uh, great, it grants you a tremendous movement speed bonus. Also, if you hit mobs with it, it freezes them. Um, very handy. If you sneak up to something with Jaws of Winter um, and hit that, plus one critical multiplier and threat. Um, and also, it freezes your target if it's if they don't have aggro on you. If you're sneak attacking them, it'll freeze your target, which is awesome. Um, this right here gives you. Minus 25% to threat generation. So important. Also, plus one critical threat and multiplier. You have to take it. Keep that stuff on cooldown. Um, of course, raging crush from half work. Guaranteed melee crit. Um, Got to have that too. If you have access to it, take it. Now, the other, the, the nicest thing about this build is all the CC abilities you have. Um, very important for Druid. Um, you have your trips go for the kill and this is not this is even even though this is single target it works better than the um, Bear ones because I could trip Reapers with this um, I could trip elementals no problem that I think bears are not able to do as well um, Bear if I use the tremor or a relentless onslaught on bear it won't trip Reapers, but those do so I can just keep um, Reaper CC'd with this stuff and do tremendous damage to him. Um, take down, it's a trip, and this isn't like a, like a two second trip or anything. You trip a mob with one of these things, it's down for a while. And the thing most people don't realize is trip saves on mobs are low. Even without vertigo, I can trip most things no problem in this game. Still train vertigo. Still have vertigo somewhere on the build though. Um, yeah, you don't need a heck of a lot of DCs for your trips. They're so important. Um, can't stress that enough. So I'll switch to wolf when I hit, run into dooms or need higher single target DPS. And um, has something nice here called ghost wolf pack which gives you a 35% corporal bonus to defense. Nice for raids and that kind of stuff. Um, but the nicest thing about it is this is the second fastest class in the game. Um, the first is, of course, Monk. If Monk spams Abundant Step, it'll surpass every class in the game. But this class is faster than the Horse when you're using Snow Slide and when you have Action Boost Sprint. Yeah, you are insanely fast on this tune. Um, yeah, I'll show you the difference between Wolf Speed and then Bear. Yeah, it slows down quite a bit. Now, that snow slide gives... Let's see if it says here. I think it gives another 20 or 30% bonus to movement speed. I can't remember. But it's huge. Um, hardly anybody will keep up with you. It's a, it's a major zerking class. Um, now, with the low MRR, you guys just got to be conscious of what you're running into. You know? If you know you're running into mobs with arcane blast, you just gotta avoid them. Have your spell resistances and absorbs and that kind of stuff ready. Um, and that's pretty much it on my build here. Uh, Reapers, I hit a little over 100 strengths. My DCs are decent on it. I don't have much problems with DCs. I also know what I'm casting stuff at, so there's that too. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hopefully, I answered everything. Um, I'll go over some spells before I go to. Some must-haves. Of course, all the melee ones I told you about, you definitely get a one. Um, some of these I'm just filling slots in so I don't get the message. But um, this is a reincarnate. Yeah, grab it. It's for raising people. Um, you're going to want that. And... You have access to these uh, regenerations and regeneration mass. 
if you train like I could I could throw an augment somewhere on a build to train devotion um, for soloing and stuff if you wanted to solo you could put throw an augment on this thing and you could heal yourself really well like I'll show you this is with no augment whatsoever there's a thousand damage you could heal yourself like crazy and even if you don't train it uh, still take them because regeneration has a nice effect of getting rid of um, negative levels so if you get like five negative levels you throw that on yourself and in like a in like 10 seconds they're all gone or I find myself getting rid of a lot of other people's negative levels so I take mass right here um, the hardest part about this build is just learning when to switch and getting used to switching you know um, stop fumbling between your hot bars here and I usually mouse click them so I'm gonna have to look into getting them hot barred and stuff to make it easier on myself but that's what I do right now I don't have a problem with it I don't mind mouse clicking them but I kind of just switch between these left and right um, the helpless I'll tell you how this build compares with others um, it's probably be another question I get how does it compare to the meta builds um, I designed this build to keep up with the metas okay now are you gonna do as much DPS as some of the single weapon fighting builds out there um, that are going crazy right now like I got guys in my build, uh, guild running pure pally with the hand axe and fury that can just blast mobs like crazy um, no it's not going to 100% keep up so they are geared more for single target DPS um, they are gonna out DPS you but in terms of helpless damage, because this build has, I think, 135% helpless damage all said and done. Um, once you train all the enhancements and that kind of stuff, and then from your epic destinies. Um, and even after update change, you're still going to have the highest helpless damage amongst your peers with this build. Um, you'll keep up with anybody, DPS-wise. And I mean that. Um, you can have the those meta builds, they don't have near the helpless damage that the, this guy does and because of that if I'm in bear and attacking AOE I will I will kill every bit as quick as those guys in wolf or bear um, against helpless targets where those builds shine is the raid pushes and raids um, this build does all right in raid pushes and raids don't get me wrong um, I'd of course want to have the more glass cannon higher DPS gear set on it you know um, definitely switch into the cloak of the hide or hide of fallen um, but besides that, yeah, it'll it'll keep up without much hassle. Um, it's really the only time that this build falls behind slightly on is the raid pushes. Um, besides that, though, I can keep up. I, I use my guildies as a benchmark. If they're if I'm keeping up with them on kills and and on how I fast I see the you know red names go down and uh, mobs go down. Um, that tells me I'm in the right place, and let's put it to you this way, um, amongst everybody that I run with, I don't see too many people leaving me in the dust, um, or any, I should say. I don't really see anybody really that I could honestly say, yeah, they leave me in the dust, can't even keep up with them at all. Um, on the contrary, I think it's kind of the opposite of most people, except for, like, some of the highest end players for my guild, um. Yeah, usually it's the opposite way around. I'm leading to charge and most quests and that kind of stuff and have the most kills usually and that kind of stuff and I'm doing the most damage. So that's what I found on this build. Alrighty. Um, as for the Reaper points, uh, this is just like any other build melee-wise. I, I don't recommend really going melee unless you have 110 plus. You know, you want to have that HP cushion and have a few trees maxed. Um, of course, max out Grim Barricade and then work on the strength one. Or I'm sorry, the melee one next for the melee power and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, that's it, you know. So next week I'll be going over healing. Um, I'll release the video next week and it'll be a little bit longer, you know. I would say on a scale from 1 to 10 how hard it is to gear this one out. Um, I think it's real easy to gear personally. I think you guys could gear this, you know, have all this gear here pretty quick. Hardest part to get, in my opinion, is probably the raid necklace if you don't have it. Um, 
But the rest of this stuff, easy farming. You just gotta run slave lords. I love running slave lords, so I have more than enough mats to make anything I want. Um, uh, Fae Twisted um, chest is kind of annoying. You gotta get the direwolf belt, but it drops. It doesn't have a low drop rate. Um, I'd say on a scale from 1 to 10, it's like a 4 or a 5 on gearing. It's not like a lot of the healing builds or ranged builds, which those builds is like everything you wear is craftable or all raid gear. It's not going to be hard to gear it out. The healing side of my build is going to be like 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 to gear out. It takes forever. If you don't have it done, I would just recommend staying to healing or or staying to DPS or just figuring something out. So this is 4 or 5 out of 10. Um, next week's build is going to be a kind of a 10 out of 10 on gearing out how, how hard it is. So, alrighty, you all take care now.